everybody. Welcome to the Information Technology and General Services Committee meeting. I'm joined by my two colleagues, uh, Councilmember Blumenfield and Councilwoman Monica Rodriguez. Uh, if we can, um, here I see Councilmember Koretz in the audience. If we can take number two uh, first, so we'll allow the Councilmember to uh, speak on his item. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, motion relative to instructing the Bureau of Sanitation Chief Procurement Officer and the Department of General Services to report on policies and procedures the city can implement to eliminate the purchase of products for city use derived from the deforestation of the Amazon rainforest. Councilmember Kurtz. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Um, <clears throat> given how st scary and destructive all of our recent local fire fires have been, um, and clearly climate exacerbated everything from the Woolsey fire to the Skirball to the Getty fire to the Saddle Ridge fire and beyond. Uh, one of the more alarming and truly sickening things to come to my attention has been the, the reckless and insane burning of the Amazon rainforest. And what's the most disturbing is it's being done with the express consent and encouragement of the Brazilian government and its president, uh, Bolsonaro. And when Councilmember Rue and I introduced this motion in November, we also did it in partnership with the city of New York and with the hope that uh, other cities will join us uh, once uh, the first one of our resolutions passes. Um, we really need the Brazilian government to know that there'll be a fiscal impact and uh, real, relating to how we spend our dollars and hopefully many other cities uh, in the U.S. and that the Amazon rainforest is not only a, a treasure trove that drives healthy weather systems, supports life and biodiversity that's essential to the whole world, but it produces uh, a major share of the oxygen worldwide. The city is long influenced uh, by using its enormous purchasing power uh, as a tool to uh, impact policies in other regions. And I believe the reckless deforestation uh, merits our attention and our con condemnation and our action. And I would greatly appreciate uh, support for this motion. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilman Correct. That said, uh, are we going to take public comment first before we vote on this? Okay, if we can uh, take public comment first. Uh, first person, Antonio Ramirez. And this is uh, public comments. Thank you very much. Let me be the first to say that I tried to speak on general services um, at the meeting with uh, Paul Koretz, and Paul Koretz did nothing but censor me and basically banned me from speaking on general services. Yet he allowed the black woman to speak, but not me, on general services. So I will speak about it here. General services um, at La Placita has done a deplorable job. These are Latinos and um, one nigger, as I will call him. He's been spitting around me and... Um, I don't know who he is. Ms. I Ms. Uh, Ms. Ramirez, are you speaking on item number two? No, I'm speaking on the public comments. I thought that's what he said to speak on. No, I believe it was um, Didn't he just say item public? comment for number two and then, and then general public oh, comment okay. afterwards. Okay, fine. Let me start with the number one, please. Could you put, uh, give me back my it wouldn't be It wouldn't be multiple items. It would just be for item number, uh, right. number two right now. Okay, number one. Um, this is consistently so-called um, money spending um, on the next high-tech gizmos and gadgets, and I'll propose capital and technology improvements. Um, again, no, Ms. Ramirez, it's item number two, which is the Amazon rainforest I thought I could item. speak on number one. I'm going down the items. No, this was for item number two right now, and then you could, get, you could talk about uh, multiple items and general public comment later. I thought he said first public comments, and now we can, okay. Jesus Christ, I wish it would be clear. Um, item number two, um, again, don't waste money, don't waste money, and don't waste taxpayers' money. Um, the Department of General, General Services needs an overhaul in every area, and, uh, and again, your purchase uh, ag agreements and your, your, um, the way you, you basically orchestrate all your policies, they don't help anybody. What you do is you're just Mickey Mousing all around. Nothing gets resolved, nothing gets done. There are no solutions and everything is a mess. Look at the mess that you've created. So again, your policies, your procedures, the city, 
Who runs your procedures? Who runs your policies? Who oversees your city procedures and who oversees the policies? Do we have a committee that oversees all of those who implement Ma'am, these policies and procedures? Up. Again, no one knows anything. Nobody oversees anybody. And so, again, that's what I, uh, number two. And are we allowed to speak on number three or am I not? Well, we have multiple uh, multiple co agenda okay. comments so we'll allow right now. Her to speak. Go ahead. The other items and general comments. Okay. Um, number three, this is not a good idea. There, again, will be fraud, waste, abuse, and theft, like the Music Center Grand Park, uh, male and female bathrooms, and uh, you're, you're bringing in feminine hygiene free. There, there, again, nothing in life is free. And uh, I don't recommend giving um, free hygiene products because they're going to use them to plug up the toilets like they do at the music center in La Placita. So no, this would be a waste and abuse and fraud. Do not let people buy their, um, their feminine hygiene. So no, no free gizmos, no free anything. Let Because again, we will have the bathroom shut for a long period of time and it's going to be expensive to repair uh, and all the costly plumbing repairs that the city will have to uh, overdo. And so not a good idea, hell no. And for those of us who try to get into bathrooms, the bathrooms are closed for an indefinite amount of time and we have no bathrooms. And number four, I'm in a quandary if these six city owned properties will be utilized for the purposes of housing the homeless people. Uh, I am a, a homeless person and I stand firm and resolute that all the homeless junkies go to rehab and all the criminal homeless go to jail or prison and all the mental uh, homeless people go to a mental facility and all the wet facts and gangbangers be deported and all the lawful military veterans and lawful law-abiding homeless people be housed properly, appropriately, and expeditiously. Um, you created the mess, you fix it. And again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not a freebie. I had a home, and they took me out of my home. So I'm homeless by design, thanks to the fucking Jews. God bless America. I lost my home, my uh, bank accounts, everything, and I'm blackballed. How crazy am I? No, not crazy. I just call it like it is. You get tired of it. And I'm not an ass licker, thank you. And number six. Ma'am, um, time limit is up. Okay, thank you. Do I get public comments, or is... One minute. Thank you, sir, very much. I appreciate that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, General Services Committee. Um, your General Services Committee out in La Placita is deplorable. Um, you have a nigger who's out there spitting um, all over around me. I don't know who he is. He works for the city as a general employees uh, member. I've told the LAPD. I've taken pictures of him. They also ride their little cart too quickly on, this, on the sidewalk and on the street, on the bike lane. They've almost ran over pedestrians in La Plastita, also at Main Street. So again, you're doing a deplorable job. One day they're going to run over somebody or kill somebody, and I'm going to come back and say, I told you so. So having said that, you need to buckle them down. They have no manners, they have no graciousness, they run over people's property, and that is wrong. And I've got pictures of it, and I've got dates and times documented, and it will be submitted. So... God bless America, and God bless Donald Trump, and God bless the city. We need to take out all the goddamn Democrats who got us into this mess and put in Republicans. No right, no Republicans. Get Republicans in like Donald Trump America. with rebels. I'd like to call, uh, starting uh, general public comment, we'd like to call up Mike Greenspan up, please. Okay, we'll move on to Wayne. Green Spencer. Yeah. Yes, so let's start off. We're going to have feminine hygiene products and all the restrooms. Years ago, years ago, you had this here in the building and you took it all out. Now, that's the thing. But what about male hygiene products? Uh, see, according to Councilman Krikorian today, that he, he wants city facilities to also have showers, too. So please put showers in all of the restrooms, city-owned facilities, as well as feminine hygiene products. So when you go and you wash yourself in those sensitive areas. Oh, by the way. Uh, so. Yep, so he's here. So you see, you got to. 
Yeah, you know, see, now we can get we can get rather graphic with this if we like, but you see, today we won't do that. Now you got CD5, remnant parcels, market value, all bullshit, just payoffs, more payoffs. And then we got number four, on uh, number five, Larchmont Boulevard parking garage, a purchase and sale agreement. Uh, I wish Bob Blobbenbleeld, a.k.a. Bob Blumenfield, would do what David Rue's doing and get us some more parking. See, David Rue's getting parking. Bob Blebenbleeld is taking away our parking and giving it away to homeless nigger encampments in Reseda. Yeah, it's a turning the whole place into a filth barn. Receipt and Sherman Way. How many vacancy signs, Mr. Blumenfield? There is no parking for any customers. The place is going bankrupt. The goddamn dental clinic just closed and put up his building for sale because Bob Blebenbleeld will not provide public parking. And then, of course, we want to know. John Lee, we want to see your transcripts. Yes, you're ringing the bell. Emily Alpert Reyes has John Lee's transcripts from CSUN. He did not graduate from college, and he lied that he has a college degree. We want to know why he didn't graduate. You said it was because of the earthquake. That's complete fucking bullshit. You goddamn didn't graduate for what reason? What happened to John Lee that he did not graduate but kept lying all the time that he's a college graduate of CSUN? See, Mr. Bob Blumenfield wants to know, Blebenbleeld, because you see, he graduated from college. Even Nuri, she can't hardly speak fluent English and she graduated from CSUN with a history degree. Even I went to school there one year. I mean, God, why doesn't John Lee have a goddamn college degree and he keeps lying? Yeah, so we want Lundquist for CD12. Get rid time. of this dog-eating lying prick. I'd like to uh, call up uh, Mr. Eric Previn. Greetings. Which items are we on? General well, public comment? No, it's multiple items, I believe. Thank you, sir. I know it's a lot to, lot to focus on. Um, so I took note that in December we amended the city's financial policies. And here we have the existing capital improvement expenditure program funding policy uh, is now being replaced by the city's current new city financial policy. So that's interesting. Um, I just wish that we had more of a chance to study that because it was pushed through in the busy time of December. And I know already today we use the new financial policies that allows us to do things where, for example, we don't have all the funding squared away. We're allowed to, as long as we have a category where there might be funding available. So it, it basically is a relaxation so that Kerkorian can kind of have a little more wiggle room as we head into the downturn. It's a little worrisome, frankly, because I think nobody really believes it's going that great, even though we do have two, two trains of thought there. Um, you know, kudos on the idea of saving the rainforest. I think that seems like a good area, you know, to buy products that are green where possible. But I think we have to balance, you know, because who the hell knows exactly, and now you're going to have a bunch of people advertising that they're Amazon free, and we're going to make stupid deals with folks who are Amazon free. So let's just be very diligent about choosing. And the best way to be diligent about choosing is to have real competitive bidding and do the diligent work, in my opinion. Um, and now you've got six. I would just speed down because I don't want to waste time. You've got... Well, first of all, I appreciate the feminine hygiene, Blumenfield. Nobody cares more about feminine hygiene products being available to all Angelinos than you, evidently. And I think it's a good, and Rodriguez, thank you. It's a very, it's a very noble thing. We should also provide, and I think Graciana will agree, uh, restrooms near the metro station. So that would be something to put on your to-do list. At S S uh, NBC Universal, hashtag Olympics, we have a metro station where there is a caged potty for bus drivers only. If we take the cage down, this is a practical solution, very low cost. Stick an attendant in front, men and women. We're in business, and Previn will shut up forever about the mobile pit stop. Let's do it. Thank you. 
Do I get a one minute on general, yeah, general public, public comment? comment? All right. So the one minute on general public comment, sir, it's, this is the first time we've been able to go face to face, and I realize you're looking down. But the reason why I'm pleased is because finally you've allowed me to speak. In the last couple of meetings when I came to this meeting, what you did was you called public comment while I was down at transportation or over at David Rue's Prop K ripoff meeting. Now, the, the reason why this is problematic, in my view, is that you value committee testimony so much that you limit testimony at city council. So by having three city committee meetings at the exact same time, 1 p.m., 1 p.m., 1 p.m., it, it can be difficult for people who have more than one view, people who care about where the people park in their neighborhood and how the information technology works in the neighborhood and how the city uh, does its information technology. It's not inconceivable. There are people like that. I'm one of them. And I have been screwed several times by this rule. So I'm asking you to tell uh, Council Member Martinez, we're not waiting until March after the election to cease and desist from this practice of having three committee meetings at 1 p.m. Fix it. And if it happens again, we're going to have no choice but to seek a judicial remedy. Thank Thanks. you, Mr. Eric Previn. Uh, Mr. Arnold Sachs, speaking on multiple items. Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, good, good afternoon, Arnold Sachs. So item number two, re reinforce your, your policy. Will that eliminate the use of cocaine in L.A., in L.A. County? Are we, oh, that's forested, rain, uh, forested places in, in the Amazon. But you had a policy with Arizona before you, three of you in the city had a policy with Arizona that they didn't, weren't going to purchase any stuff from that. And uh, one week after they put the policy into effect, they went to Arizona. Uh, item number three, uh, feminine hygiene products. Since we uh, have a couple of, maybe you have five city councilmen who are in the state legislature, why don't you consider not taxing them? And the idea that you would have to locate free uh, city facilities that offer free feminine hygiene products, wouldn't you already know that? Wouldn't GSD already know that? Because they'd have to refill those dispensers. So spending money to do this, maybe you could use a cloud or maybe you could use uh, some data. You need more data. Data is important. And you can talk to Mark Ridley Thomas about data, and he will tell you that, that without data, you have nothing. You need data so that you can... You can check that data to create more data. Then you can create the old data and the new data, and you can create a third pile of data. And you know what you have after that? You have piles, piles, piles and piles of data. In some, in some, in some cities, it's called piles of data. In the rest of the world, it's called piles of shit. But that's just the rest of the world. And in a world-class city, you ought to catch up with the rest of the world. Am I uh, getting into public comment, or do I have another minute, or I'm done? Yeah, you have a minute for public comment. Oh, so the Information Technology and General Services Committee, um, you seem to be speeding towards uh, technology that is off the hook. Slow down. You don't have any. You don't have any community impact statements. Well, you have one from one neighborhood council statement. But you're doing all these items, and you're not getting any community impact statements. How can you do items on your agenda and then present them to the city council without having any community impact statements or any fiscal impact statements at all? How do you do that? I mean, you, you just, like, say, oh, well, the guy behind me is paying. The guy behind me. And all you need to do, like I said earlier in the beginning over there, is you make that 12-mile, 12 12-year 12 marathon – which is not really a marathon because with all the benefits you're getting. And then you, after that, you're golden. You retire, you move to a condominium, and who gives a shit? Who knows you? Well, I'm a city council from L.A. Who gives a rat's ass? You didn't do jack shit. Thank you, Mr. Sachs. I'd like to call it Mike Greenspan. Thank you. Multiple items. Mike Greenspan, Orange Bowl champ, Florida Gator. UCLA, I still don't. Now, there, I'm, an, I'm a hobbyist recycler, so I do want to mention about the rainforest. One thing we need to do more focusing here is on our own backyard. Bottles and cans, all those plastic water bottles going into our landfill. So if we're going to talk about one aspect of ecology and recycling 
and preserving the environment, we need to be starting right here at home. One of the biggest violators is liberal Hollywood. They have a movie shoot here or a TV shoot in City Hall and all those plastic water bottles I fished out of the trash can. Also, it's a good idea for feminist hygiene products. Now, one thing you never hear anybody out here at a park say, check our restrooms. I was at a park in Metro Atlanta years ago in Forsyth County called Central Park, and the park director said, check out the restrooms. I've never had that happen out here. They're more embarrassed of the restrooms. So maybe we could be cleaning up the restrooms kind of the way Central Park in Forsyth County, Georgia. It's a county park out there in Metro Atlanta. And now there's uh, item four, Coretz Blumenfield. Well, I remember Jewish Heritage Month, and they got up and said, we've got Jewish people looking at overlooking the city's shekels. Well, these are our city's shekels. I sure hope we get a good fair market value for them, and so we could have money for all your wonderful, well-intentioned, but underfunded programs that oh, well, we look good, we're for this, but we never have money for it. Well, let's, in that area, District 5, I'm sure they can afford to be paying premium price, which is probably what the fair market value is. And then with that, you could help fund your programs, your many wonderful programs. Now, for my, for my general public comment, I know this is the Information and Technology Committee, and I have once heard Paul Koretz talking about people having issues, and one of the things he mentioned was technology issues. I'm probably one of the biggest problem people on technology. I don't own any tech. I once had a cell phone for a couple weeks, and that's it. And to me, technology is people like Jerry Pittman, married to professional singer Carmelita Pittman, gets on the web and blogs, my wife and I have no sex. Do we really need to know that? I didn't ask. He shouldn't tell. And I just can't see paying $50 a month just to know that Somebody has no sex in their marriage. Maybe his wife, who's a singer, could sing about it. But I really, it's just ridiculous. It's, it's, beneath, it's beneath gossip. I mean, why can't we do something positive with the web? I mean, I telephone, telegraph, tell a woman. That's how I heard about it. Someone named Louise Dorfman, who's been on Hoarders twice, told me, do I really need to know about Jerry Pittman's lack of sex life? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Greenspan. That, uh, colleagues, I'd like to take without objection items number three and five by consent. That's okay. Any no objections? That's good. Motion. And then, no, just three and five. Yeah. With that, I'd like to call up item number one. Item number one, report from the city administrative officer relative to the proposed capital and technology improvement policy. This matter is also referred to the budget and finance and public works and gang reduction committees. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. My name is Kay Howe with the Office of the City Administrative Officer. Before you is the proposed capital and technology improvement policy report, which would guide the city's process for planning and prioritizing funding for new capital and technology projects as well as the ongoing capital repair and maintenance of the city's existing assets. <clears throat> the current policy um, is included as part of the city's financial policy um, adopted in 2005, which is also going through the revisions for some of the sections. And this um, only provides a brief overview of our current practices and procedure. So the significant changes recommended in the proposed policies include the inclusion of technology infrastructure as a component of the city's capital program to ensure the projects are managed through a comprehensive and transpa transparent process, and also to approve a minimum investment target of 1.5% with a goal of 2% of general fund revenue for capital and technology improvements starting in fiscal year 21-22, which will be adjusted periodically as additional metrics become available. So the overall, the proposed policy reflects our current practices uh, with greater level of transparency and budgetary discipline by outlining evaluation criteria for investment, um, citywide investment priorities. So subject to the appro council's approval of the policy, the CAO would implement, um, develop and implement procedures. The overall process 
uh, will continue to follow the city's budget and annual, annual budget process and the more detailed timeline will be provided in the procedures and um, with clarifying reporting guidelines. So we'll also resume the publication of the five-year um, plan beginning in 2021-22. Um, so when we review new projects, we'll actively take consideration of the future cost uh, of project and act in a fiscally more responsible way. <coughs> I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have, and we also have representative um, to answer specific questions. Thank you. Does the policy, the, the new policy cover like maintenance of existing facilities? As far as yes, sir. So it also covers the capital, um, ongoing capital repairs and maintenance, maintenance of the ex existing facilities. And the one and a half and two include both yes. IT and the... Yes, it includes both IT, um, yes, IT and capital programs for um, physical plan side and also for municipal facilities. Colleagues? Um, hi, good afternoon. Uh, how has, I know we've been in the process uh, with GSD, for example, amending a number of contracts uh, for nonprofit organizations, many of whom are now having to pick up the costs of uh, maintenance on some of the facilities. Has that, has that all fully been adopted with uh, those agencies now assuming the responsibility and the maintenance of? Of, uh... of course, we'll have Bernice Holland. Good afternoon, committee members. Bernice Hollins with the CAO's Municipal Facilities Group. Um, that is an area that we intend to address through a separate policy. Um, we've been working in tandem with the CLA. Um, we do have a draft policy, and we're targeting the February-March time frame to take the report through um, the Municipal Facilities Committee, and then from there it will be transmitted for council consideration through this committee. Yes. So we're still in the process of kind of migrating that for, for many of those agencies to kind of fully yes, assume and the, the the, um, the, the idea is um, just in general, um, and this is our existing practice since we don't have a policy currently, um, what we've been doing is we adapted um, a transparent process that we refer to as the community benefits analysis to actually quantify the value of the services that these nonprofits are providing. Um, in all cases, we do not initiate um, any consideration of a lease unless there's a motion from the um, respective council officer, and then um, we work with general services um, to really review the conditions of the facility but um, the idea is that um, many of these facilities um, you know have been um, vacant or they haven't been um, occupied by city forces for many um, number of years um, so one of the areas that we're trying to come up to speed on is before an agency um, actually goes into the facility to have an assessment of the physical condition and to make sure that there is a, um, a plan to address those needs before we actually move forward um, with the lease so all of that I don't I don't want to talk too much since it hasn't been um, hasn't gone through MFC but these are the areas that we're looking to address through the policy um, there's certainly um, you know for so sources of funds like community development block grant funds they're so scarce throughout the city um, but those uh, that is uh, a type of um, funding source that could potentially be utilized to rehabilitate some of these facilities but again we're having to balance that against the needs of uh, many many projects um, so again a, a little more um, we're about two months away from bringing that forward, um, but we, we definitely intend to, um, to have a policy in place um, so that as uh, leases expire, we can make sure that they adhere to these new um, policies, and we want everyone to be under basically the same guidelines. Perfect. Thank you very much. I no. appreciate that. Um, my only other question related to the policy is, is in terms of the, thank you so much, um, on, the, uh, on the investment of the technology, is that going to be adjusted? Uh, are we going to hold the line? when we see additional investments, for example, from foundations, so when it comes from like, uh, the police foundation has invested a substantial amount of money uh, for the improvement of technology. Uh, you know, we, we have such great needs in investment of technology. Is that going to adversely impact our commitment to invest or will it continue to be an expanded amount of support for our police in, in, that, in that example? Right. So as of right now, we're trying to set a goal of 2%. However, we'll definitely adjust it periodically as additional metrics become available. And we do welcome, um, definitely hope, and be able to provide like increased budget uh, whenever the funding is needed. So the 2% the or the increased level is not locked at this point in time. And that, 
um, that's with the council's discretion, we wanted to go ahead and provide the level. Um, we're doing a bit of a tag team today. Um, Got it. Just to clarify, um, there would be continuing investment of special fund portions. Um, there's nothing in the policy to preclude that. But what we're looking at specifically is the general funded component. If you go through um, the attachment that we have which um, to this report, which is an inventory of all the projects that we're aware of as of present day, well, actually as of the time that the report was um, released, um, we reflect both the general fund component, the MICLA component, which is, of course, part of the general fund is the deck funded component and then there's also a special fund component but um, we felt um, it's very important to hone in on the general fund um, targeting a specific um, metric uh, to set that as a funding goal this is just in keeping with what other municipalities do and with special fund sources you can't always rely that you'll have the right color of money to deal with address your various asset needs okay. thank you okay thank you um, I'm excited about this. As you know, we talked about this in, in Budget Committee. I've been saying every year in Budget Committee we need to have our digital infrastructure as well as our physical infrastructure broken out because just like capital improvements that need to be done over time, you need to invest digitally these days in, in how we move forward. I think the 1.5 is probably going to prove to be on the low side, but that's what this process is about. That's still, it's great that we're, we're setting something like this and we can we can find the metrics over the course of the next years and we can, you know, this is just meant to be a tool. Uh, obviously the discretion is up to the council as, as to what we spend each year, um, but I've always been a big advocate for trying to invest uh, in our digital infrastructure because that's going to serve us over the long term. Just one, one quick question though on the breakdown of capital maintenance versus capital projects. Is there going to be any sort of breakdown in terms of the uh, technology infrastructure investments in terms of what's for new and what is for maintenance? We considered um, setting um, various targets um, for the different types of um, improvements that are funded through this, deferred maintenance, capital projects, the IT component. However, we felt it was um, important to leave some flexibility since um, these needs are go will not remain stagnant. Um, usually, you know, for a large IT project, there might be an initial um, investment, a very large investment, and then um, more of a continued funding to maintain these systems. But the, um, the whole point um, is that going forward we are going to be doing um, setting strategic plans for each type of asset class each type of um, element that's funded through this program and we may actually set specific metrics for um, those different components but um, one thing that I really I want to point out is um, that we did not put the 1.5 um, floor or the 2% target as part of the policy in order to give council flexibility to change that based on um, both based on our needs and on our ability to fund sure no and, and legally we couldn't do it anyway uh, we had I mean that is a council action that the you know future councils understand have, have that, that but this is great that we're doing it and and I do recommend that we we if if not have the goals built in but we certainly track the the different types of assets because this will be helpful over time as we look back and figure out how best to invest in the future Yes, we, rep um, we plan on bringing a lot of um, supplemental reports forward. Um, like I said, this is just a first step of getting us all on the same page of having a more transparent process. And as we go um, more into the planning, um, right now we're initiating a master um, plan study just for our yards and shops um, system. So as we get these results back, our initial strategic plan, we'll be bringing that forward for additional consideration and setting very specific metrics and timelines for, um, by individual asset classes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you, council members. With that being said, I'd like to move that we approve item number one. Mm -hmm. Second. <coughs> said, item one. And I apologize, we never formally approved item number two. Yeah. So if we can uh, you know, move to uh, approve item number two. Any objections? No. Nope. Nope. All right. Item two is approved. Like to, uh, I believe um, item number four. If I could, I that's number four. Uh, <clears throat> item number four: motion relative to instructing the Department of General Services to declare city-owned properties as remnant parcels adjacent to properties near Beverwell Drive in Council District Five for the purpose of selling the properties at fair market value. 
I believe we have an amendment that we need to read into the file. That is correct. Dave Roberts, General Services. Uh, the original mm -hmm. amendment was given last year, and because of AB 1486, we're reading a new amendment revision. I'll read it beginning now. Number one, action item number one, find that all properties that listed above qualify as exempt surplus land under the government code section 54221 because each of these properties is less than 5,000 square feet in area, is not contiguous to land owned by a state or local agency that is used for open space or low and moderate income housing purposes, and is to be sold to an owner of contiguous land, and B, those properties are also qualify as a remnant parcel that no longer is required for the use of the city and may be sold under their own a piece of Los Angeles program established for ordinance 180834. Action item number two, declare as exempt surplus land each of the following approximately 1,233 square feet of property adjacent to 2315 Beverly Hill Drive, approximately 1,862 square feet of property adjacent to 2251 Beverly Hill Drive, approximately 17 182 square feet of property adjacent to 2301 Beverly Hill Drive, approximately 1,334 square, 35 square feet of property adjacent to 2215 Beverly Hill Drive, approximately 1,931 square feet of property adjacent to 2299 Beverly Hill Drive, and approximately 1,189 square feet of property adjacent to 2311 Beverly Hill Drive. <coughs> Excuse me. Action item number three. Instruct the General Services Department to conduct classy estimates of all the properties listed above. And action item four, instruct GSD with assistance of the city attorney and any relevant departments to sell the said properties for fair market value as determined by a classy estimate to be completed by GSD pursuant to own a piece of Los Angeles program, Los Angeles Administrative Code, section 7.27.1. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. Uh, I'd like to move that we... Add that amendment item. Just a second. second. Just curious, well, yeah. what is the, the new, um, the state, you said there's a new state law that made those declarations required. Is it, is it declared that you, what is the, the uh, operating, the change in the state law that, that required and necessitated that? Well, we have to declare properties that are exempt or surplus. And the new law. We've always had to do it, right. Yes, but we now have two categories. Because these properties are not cannot be used for housing purposes, they are under the category of less than 5,000 square feet. Now, the difference is that the prior law stated that we had to declare everything, as you said, but these are specific because they are going to be only used for adjacent property owners. Okay. Well, I'll look at the, I'll, I'm just, it was just curious. So the new law deals specifically with housing if, if it has a possibility of of uh, housing, then you have to make other declarations or whatnot. That's correct. Okay. Great, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Rodriguez. Any questions? Okay, that said, I'd like to approve item number four with that amendment. Seeing no objection, item four is approved. I'd like to ask uh, item number six. That brings to item number six. Item number six. Report from the city administrative officer relative to the third construction project report for fiscal year 2019-2020. This matter is also referred to the budget and finance committee. Please note there is an amendment to this uh, motion, motion uh, report. I believe there's an amendment you're reading into. Yes, I'll, I'll read that at the end of my remarks. Good afternoon, Chairman Lee and committee members. Justin Lawson representing the CAO. Before you is the third 2019-20 construction projects report. This report recommends a total of $46.8 million in transfers and appropriations for previously authorized construction projects. Of this amount, $12.7 million is for Public Works Bureau of Street Services, $11.7 million is for the General Services Department, and $21.4 million is to be transferred to other city funds. There are no known impacts to the, to the general fund in connection with the authorized projects in this report. Any potential increases in operations and maintenance costs associated with these projects will be addressed through the city budget pro process as projects are completed. Amendment to the report reads, replace controllers, controllers instructions reflected in attachment two of the 2019-20 third construction projects report for item AAA 
CD8 Constituent Service Center tenant improvements in its entirety as needed to provide additional transfers of $405,058 to the General Services Department Construction Forces in order to meet critical deadlines for completion of the subject projects, bringing the total transferred amount to $2,603,335. We have various representatives in attendance to answer any questions you have for the specific projects. Thank you. Okay. Um, my only question is, I, I don't know if you can answer this the, regarding the copper wiring. It seems to be an issue that we have uh, yeah. been having a problem, and I'm we, sure we, throughout the throughout the city. But we have my industry. Is you lighting? Anyone? Street service. Street service. Yeah. Street lighting? Street, street lighting? Light. Couple light. wire? Couple Anybody? You're all here for item number six? Wow. It's a, <laughs> very like, are you taking a choice? David, David Rana? Yeah. David, you want to take a shot or anything? Good afternoon. Lindsay S. is with the CAO's office. I so, can hopefully field your question. Yeah. So <laughs> I just, you know, what are we doing? It, it seems to be a problem every time we seem to fix it. It just. Yeah, it it certainly is an ongoing issue for the Bureau of Street Lighting. I think they're responding as best they can with their current resources. Um, they have requested some additional resources for the current year as well as looking into the next fiscal year that we're currently analyzing as part of the budget process. So I, I think they're just kind of trying to work as well as they can within their existing resources. But it, it certainly is a very prevalent issue citywide and continues to increase. I know in the past that we've uh, actually gone to the people who are buying copper, all the different organizations are buying copper that we've actually asked them to report to the city if mm -hmm. you know, when they receive certain amounts. Are we still doing that? Is this still part of the city's procedures? I don't, I don't know if they're specifically doing that. I know that recently due to kind of another surge of this issue, they have um, reinstated their uh, copper wire theft. I think there's a task force that they've um, kind of reinitiated a little bit so I, I I don't I'm not sure if that particular thing is something that that task force is looking into but we can certainly keep that in mind as we work on addressing this issue okay. well thank you thank Appreciate you it. no other copper wire uh, experts in the room okay Actually, any questions I led the task force wow would you like to testify no <laughs> any questions Councilman Blumenfield with that, uh, with no objection, I'd like to uh, approve item number six. You're, you're all excused. All right. Put this is Kirsten. Hello, Megan Cotillard. So with that, I'll be, we've cleared the. Put this is Kirsten. Well, adjourn the meeting. Thank you very much.